fancy countdown for this one. Stacy, I don't know if you saw, but for one of our shows, we went to um, Ecamm, which is the software we use to do this. And so Cheryl made this nice countdown timer because there's like this period of time, just like now. So there was zero people, then there's like 30 or 40 people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Magic. You know, but you get Stacy as your prize, which is a much better prize, I think. Yes, exactly. And um, for those of you who don't know, I can't imagine, but Cheryl and I did the Dr. McDougall 12 day program online in July. Stacy Cross is our current health specialist and works for the McDougall program and just finished the October program or is finishing. And that's, a, I, that's got to be a lot. So Stacy is, and what does support specialist mean? And I can kind of tell you my view and then maybe you could tell your view. Is Stacy is the person that for the 12 days, we see her every day mm -hmm. and we have some minutes to talk to her and just ask questions or if we had, because there's lots of material coming at you, lectures and talks and chats, and you can get everything sort of straightened out. Then you see Stacy for once a week for three months, two months. All the months have gone together in my brain. And then it's going to be monthly until you reach the year mark. So Stacy is one of the health specialists. Tiffany, I think, is the other one right now. And so tell us what's going on with you or if you, want, if you have a better definition of support specialist. Yeah, no, you kind of nailed it. So we are support specialists. So the idea is that we kind of hold your hand through the course of the program all the way through the 12 days. Yes, but for the whole year, which is, I think, the bigger thing is that what happens after you graduate from the McDougal program, like our October program is graduating tonight. And then tomorrow morning they wake up and they don't have a check-in with their support specialist anymore. And so how do they begin to live their normal lives? They don't have lectures anymore. You know, this has been taking up a huge space in their daily life for the last 12 days. Um, and I think I might've mentioned this last time, but I think it bears repeating, which is that part of why I love the year of support is because so much of our lives happen in that year you know, funerals, weddings, layoffs, you know, happy and sad occasions, things that would and have for many, many years for most of us completely thrown us off our game. And so having a support specialist during that time ensures that you have somebody to come back to and say, hey, I'm struggling with this or help me brainstorm how to approach this other social event or whatever it is that you're going through. So so I'm going to be with Cheryl and Kathy through the thick and the thin, literally, and also through all the highs and lows of their lives, the things that they're not even anticipating right now that they don't even know are coming their way. And so it's really an honor, honestly, and a privilege to get to walk with people through a whole year of their lives and to be there to help them overcome. It's really fun. That's amazing. Um... And how does it feel like, so how many times a year do you do the online program now? Like four or is it more than that? It depends on the year. I think we had five this year. Um, we've had years where we've had more. Next year we'll probably have more also because it's been, the last few programs have sold out and it's been really great. In fact, this October program, we had a ton of people. So a, a sold out program is 50 people. and just because there were, honestly, there were so many people who came in at the last minute really needing urgent help. We ended up um, with more than 50 people, this program. And so it, it was really full. It's super fun when there's a full program. There's a lot of um, a lot of momentum, you know, behind that, behind a large number of people. But um, I would anticipate that we, we may, we'll see may be able to add a couple extra programs next year, but we'll see. It all depends on how things continue to go. We have our next program is in January. So some people feel a little um, worried about waiting this long. You know, it's October. That's our last program of this year. 
and they want to book the next possible program. And a lot of people, as you can imagine, come to us very ill. You know, they have a major diagnosis that they've just received and they need help now. Um, and so they feel a little apprehensive about waiting till January. But what, what I wanted to make sure to communicate to you all is that if you do need urgent help, you can go ahead and sign up for the January program and we can go ahead and get you started on the medical side, meaning you can go ahead and have your visit with Dr. Lim, um, potentially if necessary, even your visit with your support specialist, we can provide you, get you set up on the diet and provide you all the information that you need so that you can begin now and you don't have to wait till January. That's super helpful. And I will say too, I was, so we, we all know that I started and I signed up for everything and then mm -hmm. Cheryl kind of came along. But when I was talking to chef AJ, I was like, July seems so far away when I, I think it was in like May and she's like, yeah. Oh, it'll be here really fast. But then what I did is I signed up for that first talk with Dr. Lim that you do pay. And I think it's, if I remember correctly, it was around $150. And if you choose to join the program, that money got applied to the program too. Let, let me just correct you real quickly. Okay. So, so those are kind of two, we're talking about two different things. So, um, so there's a consultation that's available. This is good. I'm so glad you brought this up. So one thing that is available to anyone who may be on the fence about whether they're a good candidate for the program, whether their medical issues or concerns can be even addressed by participating in the program, you can sign up for a consultation with Dr. Lim. The cost of that consultation is $250. It's like a 30 minute, 25 right. or 30 and, minute consultation. Mm -hmm. And just so everybody, knows, it's not that I pay that. I just couldn't remember what I paid. So she's right. Yeah, she's right. Like, it didn't change. It's been that forever. Yeah. <clears throat> So anyway, so you can sign up for a consultation with Dr. Lim for that $250. And then you just, you book that consultation, you meet with him. Um, he goes over kind of your medical history, which we will send you a form when you book a consultation with him, have you fill that out. It's your health history form. He goes over that with you in that consultation. And then he gives you an idea of whether he thinks you're a great fit for the program or if it's the right time for you, or, you know, those kinds of things that everybody's wondering about. And he also gives you a realistic expectation about what kind of results he thinks you could experience after being a part of the program. And so then if you decide after having that consultation with Dr. Lim, I'm going to go ahead and pull the trigger and join the program, then that cost, that amount that you paid for the consultation actually goes towards, goes off of the total cost of the program. And so essentially it's like you end up getting a free consultation, an additional consultation with Dr. Lim. So I encourage everybody to come in that way. If, if you're in any way unsure of whether or not you want to do this, that's a fantastic way to come in and try just kind of get your toes, dip your toe in and, and see if it's for you or not. And for me personally, cause I have a little doctor phobia. <laughs> <laughs> going mm -hmm. on these days like I wanted to see who I was talk to who I was going to work with and find out how it felt to me I know not everyone is like that but Dr. Lim is just so warm and welcoming yes, yeah. yes. um yeah. Cheryl didn't really experience that part of it though she did sit in while I was having my talk and he was very kind asked really good questions and in fact when I got off that call I kind of had a little homework and I was excited about the program. So it all kind of really worked in really well for me. And right. so I think if you're, if you're on the fence at all, and it's something you're like, well, I have this money, but I'm not sure if this is right for me, I think it's great. So the thing you were talking about then was, after you've signed up for the program and paid your money, you can still get one of your visits early Yes, exactly. So your your preliminary medical visit, which usually takes place in the week or two, two to three weeks before the program begins, we can bump that up for you if necessary, if you need need to see him right away. Well, that's awesome. So we had a couple of questions. So you guys who are watching now, this is your time to get to ask Stacy questions about the Dr. McDougal Starch Solution, the 12 day program, maximum weight loss plan, Mary's Mini, 
other whole food plant-based no oil questions and we got a couple i did put it up in the youtube community so we'll start with um one that was saying kind of about potatoes turning into sugar when then sugar being hard for some other things so it was uh, i think it was actually i'm not going to gender because I don't remember. Somehow I feel like it was a masculine question, but I have no idea. <laughs> I don't remember the name, but it said that they have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which is what I have, or it seems to be improving. My liver numbers are great. Um, and says that, you know, sugar has been, is known to make non-alcoholic fatty liver disease worse. So I think that's a, that's a thing we can all agree on. And the thing that I think gets murky, and I feel like Dr. McDougall talked about this in the 12-day program specifically, is about how starches like potatoes, corn, corn other things, get processed and turn into glucose. And there's a difference in those, which I'm going to back out of and let you explain. Because the person couldn't really understand, I think, how eating potatoes could help heal this non-alcoholic fatty liver disease? That's a great question. So non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, just like many of the major chronic illnesses that most Americans are facing right now, including heart disease, diabetes, many autoimmune illnesses, but specifically heart disease and diabetes and often cancer are related to fat, dietary fat and bodily fat. Um, most of us are carrying too much fat on our bodies. And so our weight, our weight is related to these issues cropping up. And on the other end, losing weight helps these issues disappear. So with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, the issue is dietary fat. So what you need to do is you begin following the starch solution a starch centered whole foods plant-based diet no oil no animal products and very low fat so try to you know limit or eliminate nuts seeds avocado tofu those types of things um, at least while you're trying to lose weight <clears throat> and as you lose weight and as you cut out the majority of your dietary fat that non-alcoholic fatty liver disease begins to reverse and you begin to see your liver numbers and your enzymes get better and better and better. Um, you're giving your body the opportunity to release stored fat. So when you have fat in your liver, it's because it's basically just trying to stuff it in every available space that it can. And the liver being one of them. Now your liver is incredibly resilient. Kathy, we've talked about that quite a bit because I know you were concerned about about can I really reverse this? Can I really get better? And you can, it's amazing how quickly and relatively easily the liver heals. So um, to answer your question about potatoes though, potatoes are not the same thing as donuts. And I want you guys to etch that on my tombstone when I die, because that's the message I want to leave the world. <laughs> right? I think that's, that's amazing because I think yeah. People do like they go, OK, well, this goes to this. So it's kind of like saying cats and lions are the same thing and both are likely to kill me the same way. Like, yeah, there's a tiny part Correct. of it that's true. And you mess with Mr. Fergus and he might he might come for your throat. I don't know, my little <laughs> kitty. <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't recommend that you provoke him, but yeah, so that's a great example. Um, I don't know if it goes, if that analogy goes all the way, but we'll, we'll use it. Okay. So, so glucose is your body's preferred fuel source. Okay. So carbohydrates are glucose, contain glucose and glucose is what your body uses for energy and burns for energy all the live long day. Okay. When you give your body a donut, it will burn that donut. It will burn the glucose in that donut. Now, unfortunately, because of how highly processed that donut is, your body burns, burns through the glucose, the available, like helpful glucose like that. But then it's got all this fat and oil and whatever else is in that, that it's like, well, what do we do with this? Let's store it for a rainy day. 
which is why we all have evidence of the foods that we've been eating our whole lives on our bodies that we carry around all the time. So potatoes are not like that for many reasons. One, potatoes have glucose, yes, and very, um, very good, clean fuel for your body to run on, but it also, they also have tons of water, so they're hydrating your body. They have bulk, you know, you can get way more in the way of volume of potatoes for your calorie buck than you can get donuts. So the volume and the weight of potatoes is much greater. And so it's more likely to satisfy you. I don't know when was last time y'all had a donut. And I'm sorry if using the example of donut is triggering anybody, but it's just the first thing that came to mind. But I just remember I used to love donuts. I used to eat them all the time. Every time we would get them, you know, I would just way overeat them. But um, they did nothing for me. Nothing. Like they were only for my taste buds. They did not stick with me. There was no like fullness. They weren't nourishing me. I got, I would always like always get a terrible headache and stomach ache afterwards. And then I'd be up on the scale. Anyway, we all know what happens when you eat a bunch of donuts. So that's because all the donuts contain is sugar, fat, salt, and basically air. That's it. <laughs> okay. There's no fiber to slow down your digestion of them. So they, that glucose hits your bloodstream like lightning and then it's burnt up and it's gone because there's nothing of substance slowing down the digestion of them. And so as long as you continue to eat donuts, yes, your body will continue to store the fat from the donuts somewhere and your liver is the place where it's been storing fat. And potatoes are not like that. You know, you burn them, you use them up and there's no, there's no fat really to store. So you just use them. It's they're perfect, efficient fuel for your body. And so anyway, that's the long of it. Um, the short of it is yes, you can eat potatoes and reverse fatty liver disease for fatty. So the diet for fatty liver disease is exactly the same as the diet for diabetes, which is exactly the same as the diet for heart disease, which is exactly the same as the diet for autoimmune illnesses, exactly the same diet for cancer, exactly the same diet for the planet to save the planet. And it's also just happens to be like really friendly to our sweet little furry creature friends too. So yeah, same exact thing for fatty liver as what we're talking about here, the starch solution. And I think sometimes we get this, I get the same question. I know that you get the same question a, a, a lot because mm -hmm. like, you know, the keto people have really vilified carbs as well. So, and, and it's not that some, you know, I know the keto diet was developed first for like, what is it, juvenile epilepsy? And so I'm not mm -hmm. trying to give that part of it but just in general, the fact that, you know, what was it a few years ago, everything was plant-based. Like that was right. the big thing commercially. Now you go into the supermarket, some of those products have disappeared and now it's all low sugar, low carb, whatever mm -hmm. stuff. And I think with them going potatoes make, cause they are literally saying potatoes are the same thing as sugar, right? Right, yeah. Um, so I didn't mean to be rude. I'm actually pulling something up that I wanted to read oh. to you all. Um, so if because you, you just hit act just yeah. like you're across the counter for me, cause you are, and I would expect, I would be like, totally yeah. get your phone out. Yeah, I had to, because you brought up the keto diet and I just, I screenshot this. Um, it was posted on a neighborhood page, neighborhood Facebook page for my neighborhood that I live in. And um, I, I screenshot it and immediately sent it to Jeff Novick because I was like, look at this. Um, I'm going to read this to you guys right now. Strange request. My daughter's future service dog is in advanced training and is being trained to detect ketones. The agency needs swabs when someone has moderate and large ketones. Problem is that we work hard to keep her ketones down and I cannot put her into ketosis or she will likely end up in the hospital. They let us send in swabs from others with large ketones, but I need to find other people who may be doing the ketogenic diet to get those. If you are in ketosis with moderate to large ketones, 
and would be willing to send in swabs, I would be so appreciative. I can come to you to do the collection and have everything we need. Hello. Oh my God. Right. So just to make sure we're all on the same page here, this woman's daughter has a very serious illness. I'm guessing that it's juvenile, you know, type one diabetes, which is no longer called juvenile diabetes because people are developing it later in life. And they are getting her a service dog to save her life when she goes into ketosis, but they can't put her into ketosis or she may have to be hospitalized. So they're asking if there's anybody on the keto diet that can spit on the swab so they can send it in so that the dog can be trained to detect when she's in tremendous danger for her life. But everyone's on this diet doing ketosis. Oh, let's, are you in ketosis? No, are you? Oh, yep, I was yesterday, but I'm not today. They're testing their pee every day with strips that are meant to be for people with diabetes to see if they're in ketosis. It's a very serious situation. Ketosis is meant to be an emergency state for your body. You are not meant to be in ketosis. Ketosis is a, your body's Hail Mary last ditch effort to keep you alive. I don't want anyone to ask me about ketosis because it is complex and I don't have a perfect explanation of it, but I just wanted to read that to you guys to point out the real seriousness of deciding to just walk around in ketosis in your body, that there are people whose kids could die from that and definitely would be hospitalized with it. It's not anything to mess around with. Yeah, that, that is pretty serious. And thanks for sharing that with us. That's another way to look at it that I haven't before. And we can talk a little more about this later too. It's just, it seems like there's so many messages out in the world, even let's say, okay, so um, the keto diet is very far away from the whole food plant-based no oil. Like it's almost like a nice little line because we kind of do the opposite things, right? But then let's say, let's say we get rid of all those things and we're only listening to the whole food plant-based people. <laughs> I don't know if you can see the subtle change in Stacy's face, but like it, everybody gets along and everybody has good things. But I think what's hard is, is we have all these voices going around. And we're trying to pick one. Mm -hmm. And I, and I will say, I think it's easy for me. It was easy to pick one and okay. So we do Dr. McDougall, we're doing the starch mm -hmm. solution. And, but I think what happens is we go, Squirrel, there was a study about <laughs> yeah. squirrel. I heard that I need to have, I, I don't know, I'm just making this up, four green beans a day, or I'm going to have bad eyes. You know, there's always these very weird, loosey goosey things. So, like, I personally find comfort going potatoes. Potatoes work for everybody over in the whole food plant based thing, but I, and it, I think when we cross that line, potatoes means something else to them well you know before we did the the starch solution um, a lot of my co-workers were all jumping on the keto bandwagon and a lot of the guys were just like shedding weight like crazy right like one mm -hmm. guy he came into my office to get help with something i didn't even recognize him he had lost so much weight and they were all like, oh, yeah, dude, you need to hop on this with us. And we're all, you know, you can eat lunch over here with us and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, seriously, kind of like thinking about it and thinking about it. And then I was like, I'm a diabetic. <laughs> Why would I want to put myself in danger on a daily basis? Right. And I thought, this just can't be good. So luckily, mm -hmm. I, I avoided getting caught up in that. But um, it was it was kind of hard to avoid it seeing the results that some of those folks were getting. But I also saw that same guy now that passed the pandemic and now we're we're talking what three years later or so since I saw him and he's gained most of that weight back because he's no longer eating that way. And I from and this is all anecdotal experience, just for so you guys are very clear on that. But I've seen people too who've lost a lot of weight very quickly using some diet like the keto diet or something like that. And I 
you often see that they don't keep that weight off because that staying in ketosis, like Stacy's saying, you have to test, you have to do this, you have to do that. It's not a state your body is naturally supposed to be in for 40 years, 60 years. And I feel like when we eat um, starch solution way, we're just eating natural food that our everybody, you know, pre-1979 munched on all day long. And, you know, it, it's just normal, everyday food. It's not a hardship. It's not we're buying. We're, whenever someone asks, people sometimes ask me, will you make a vegan keto ice cream? And I'm just like, you know, I, I really would like to not put coconut oil in this. Thank you very much. You know, it's like stuff that I, that's hard to clean. So when I got the Ninja Creamy, it was before I was doing the starch solution, but I did one of their recipes and I used the coconut milk. We had to put it through the dishwasher twice. If we had to put that through the dishwasher twice, what were our insides like, right? And so to me, there, and, and again, I'm sure if we were on the other side, someone else would have very logical, easy things to say as well. But potatoes are cheap. Rice is cheap. Ve frozen vegetables, like I, I feel like it's just a more easily accessible diet. Like I, I love Dr. Greger too. I know he has an app for his, his daily dozen. And I'm probably never going to meet all of those. And maybe someday I'll be like, this is the year I'm going to hit all these marks and that's fine. But that it's not as easy as, Oh, I have some potatoes in the fridge. I'm going to go steam some vegetables. And I think that's one of the things for me that makes the McDougal diet. And, and it's not diet McDougal lifestyle starch solution way of eating is because it's not a diet. It's not something you do for 12 days. You don't do those 12 days in the program and you're done. And look at me, I'm all like, you know, no, it gives you a good solid foundation to then continue. And, and I'm going to give you some time to talk so you can agree or disagree with anything that I said. Well, oh, I have so many thoughts. Well, the first one is that um, <clears throat> as we're talking about this, I'm thinking, you know, that's all true. Everything you said, there are definitely people, though, that eat our way lose their weight and gain it all back. And that also exists in the whole food plant-based world and in the starch solution world. And the reason is because we really don't want to have to limit ourselves and control ourselves around food. And unfortunately, I will tell you all right now that you will have to do this for the rest of your life to maintain your weight. You will. There's no finish line. Now, there is a finish line in the sense that once you get to your goal weight, you are able to loosen up a tiny bit. What does that look like? Well, it looks like reincorporating bagels. Like I can eat a bagel when I want to eat a bagel. I can sometimes have a little couple, tiny little handfuls of nuts, you know, and I won't gain my weight, but you better believe I'm watching it closely because I know that I am always, one little toe away from going back to where I feel out of control around food again. So it's, it's a very sobering message that I bring you all today, but you're just not going to be able to eat it all and have it all and also have the body that you want to have and have the health that you want to have. You just can't, you're not going to be able to do that. And I'm so sorry. And I feel the sadness of that sometimes myself too, but in order to have permanent lasting change, you have to find something that you can foreseeably do for the rest of your life. And that's what I think is the difference here is that what we're asking you to do is livable forever. I don't know about you ladies, but I've never been on a diet that I felt like I could live with forever until I happened upon Dr. McDougall and the starch solution. Absolutely not. No, and, you know, yeah. and, and that's one of the things that we've talked about several times mm -hmm. is that, you know, it is maintainable. So you, in, in the beginning or when you start limiting some things, I think sometimes your brain goes, wait, don't do that. Right. right. But I think cravings. Yeah, yeah. Cravings are just, you know, I know that in the past I was like, well, 
what if I could never go out to eat at this particular restaurant on vacation mm -hmm. again or something? Like these strange scenarios that aren't really that important anyhow. But I feel like now we kind of have some workarounds. We could still go, if it's being in this space that's so beautiful, we can make different choices. We could find something else to do. But also it's that, you know, I feel like there are alternatives to just about everything. And we were on a vacation recently and and we didn't we did we did pretty good we'll talk about that tomorrow because uh, <laughs> we see you tomorrow but one of the things that we missed like we missed having our oatmeal every morning when we didn't have it we had salad for lunch really and had like 10 minutes to eat salad so we had we didn't eat enough right and and mm. honestly like I got to the point where I was like in the evenings, almost a hateful person to be around because <laughs> I was hungry. Like I was hungry all the time because I went from eating, you know, really starch heavy lunches and dinners. And now all of a sudden I'm eating salad. Like there wasn't even enough salad for me to eat. And the amount you know, of time the little that we thing were for given. a hot dog, that's what we got to put our salad in. So we have these little containers. They did have chickpeas and there were some beets, but I didn't even have potatoes until the last day. Yeah. Like, like, so there wasn't really a lot of options for us. I'm glad that they gave us the options that they did. But after eating this way, um, like I stayed hungry all the time she's and, still and I'm getting still having a hard time feeling like my body's back to feeling full and stuff and it's just this weird experience but we'll talk about that tomorrow but but it's like some of it is adding start so i guess in the end what we we did these things and what we found out instead of like oh i really want that treat i had oh i really want that like i got something with cauliflower in it and i was like give me all the cauliflower give me all the oatmeal <laughs> like oh potatoes there's some baked potatoes get out the california balsamic so it it in a way it, it's almost like it's the opposite effect like did we do perfectly no have we planned it out but it i don't i don't feel like other than that week us not losing weight that it didn't change our mindsets. We weren't like, oh, I want to be able to go out to eat all the time. We were just like, oh, thank God we don't have to go out to eat today. We can have all the potatoes we want. So we've been, you know, lots of veggies, lots of potatoes, soups with potatoes, all the things. So I just want to mention that because it's, it's not as hard, or it hasn't been as hard for us because even when we've done something that supposedly will trigger us to go and down into this deep hole that we may not be able to dig ourselves out of we seem to be like yeah no let's let's go back to the potato place seriously when we got home i could have went down to the freezer and opened up my my special bag of frozen veggies and just like ah, 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 <laughs> into my mouth like i was missing all that so much which is so weird because i'm the person who like usually is like ooh. I had a hot dog. Let me have another hot dog. You know, like, yeah. but no, mm -hmm. I'm just like, yeah, I, I am like, I'm digging how we're eating. And, and, and it's crazy. It, this, and we're not just making this up because Stacy's on here. Because no. Stacy is just hearing a little of the truth she'll hear tomorrow. But it, I want to express this to you guys because I know some people are emailing me and they're like, but it's so restrictive. But it's, you know, I'm worried I won't have that. And I think the thing is, is if, for me as a recipe person, if there's something you, you're kind of missing, I probably can help you make it in a starch solution compliant way. So like, whereas Chef AJ may eat a plain baked potato with nothing on it, that doesn't mean you have to. It depends on you and how you feel and your food stuff and mental stuff to go with that. But I can make an ancho oat chili or an ancho oat queso that you could pour over it, put some black beans, let's get some fresh corn, put a little lime on there, right? We can make it still like, I want that right now. I could just for me saying, I was not expecting that, but we need to have lime. <laughs> you just, I was like, ooh, you're making Mexican. <laughs> so Stacy, I am going to ask a couple of questions too, but I think you gave us that really great, truth and you're being absolutely truthful which is what i love about you the most maybe second most 
first is just, I think you're delightful. And I love that you're, you. you're honest too. There's so many things like, that's why I want to have you on here too, is that I want to share a little piece of you with everybody because I think it will help them decide what path is best for them too. And, and every time that you've been on here, we've gotten an email from somebody that had some kind of profound aha moment for them mm -hmm. that has made Good. such a difference. And with that, let's get into these people's questions. Yes. So what is your take on soy-free tofu alternatives like chickpea tofu? There's hemp tofu. She's not saying that. And usually they don't know. <laughs> from, from what I, I know some of it, chickpea tofu is either made one of two ways. You make chickpea milk and make it just like soy tofu, or you use chickpea flour and make it like you would polenta basically, which is shun. And so all of those things should be allowed on the McDougal program as far as I know. Yeah. Yeah. I honestly, I don't know much about them at all, but um, if the only thing that you said that, that gives me a little bit of pause is that something is made with flour sometimes, the chickpea mm -hmm. possibly. Um, so the only thing about that is that uh, flour products do tend to be more easily absorbed. They don't stick with people as well sometimes. So you, it would be like a trial and error thing, like seeing if it's a filling thing for you or not. Um, I would say maybe just eat chickpeas. I mean, I, I just think the less processed of something that you can eat, the better, generally speaking. But I don't hear anything that's like a red flag that worries me about those products. And hemp a or um, is I know the one we get here. It's made with hemp seeds, and sometimes peanuts. So those are going to be higher calorie density. So I would look yeah. and see if you're seeing, if you're looking into the alternatives, just to turn it over, check it out next to like the regular tofu. Because if we're adding chickpeas, are going to be less fatty than than soybeans or seeds, but seeds are slipping in. I think there's pump as well, which is pumpkin seed tofu. That's a commercial product. Yeah. So anything made with seeds or nuts will be more calorie dense. So I would avoid those during weight loss. All right. Okay. And here's, uh, oh, Cheryl's saying uh, sweet potatoes and broccoli are my new breakfast obsession. I actually have sweet potatoes in there. And now you just made me decide that that's what we're having for lunch. So thank you, Cheryl. Oh, good. Thank you, Cheryl. I was hoping for Mexican. Well, no, make Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Susan A says, my numbers are just below pre-diabetic. I started wearing a CGM on a whole food plant-based diet. I found that all beans, sweet potatoes, fruits cause a big blood sugar spike. Help. What do I eat? Ooh, Stacy's got this one. Oh, baby, get ready, girl. I'm about to tell you what to do. First of all, take off your CGM. You're done with it, okay? Unless you've been diagnosed with diabetes and you have been advised by a doctor to wear it, please do not. Why? Because all of those things that you're talking about, they spike your blood sugar because they are very good, fantastic sources of your body's preferred natural fuel so source, which is glucose. They are working in your favor. The numbers are misleading, you know, because the, the analogy that Dr. McDougall gives that I love so much is let's say we go into my bathroom right now and I've got the plug in the sink, right? So the, the sink drain is plugged up and I turn on the water and the water starts overflowing over the sides of the sink and falling to the floor and suddenly my whole bathroom is flooding with water. What if I go in there with a bunch of towels and start sopping up the water? Does that fix the problem? No, of course not because I haven't turned off the water and I haven't opened the drain. Okay, that's exactly what it is when we're looking at blood glucose numbers and trying to just drive those numbers down. Yes, it is important to have healthy blood glucose numbers so that you're not causing end organ damage by having 
always elevated glucose hitting your kidneys and your eyes and your everything. Okay. Yes, that is important for regulating diabetes is trying to keep those numbers lower, but trying to fix numbers does not fix the problem. The problem is that your cells are, are holding too much fat. And so the insulin that's supposed to carry that glucose into your cells to be used as energy does can't get in there. The fat's globbing it up and it's saying, nope, you can't get in here. Until you start eating a low fat diet and losing weight, losing weight is paramount for someone who has prediabetes. Generally speaking, yes, there are thin people who get diabetes and, but the solution is the same for them. We put them on a very, very low fat diet and we get rid of the dietary fat. And in that way, then the cells release the extra stored fat. And that makes you sensitive to insulin again, meaning the insulin can take the glucose and put it into your cells. And so your blood glucose numbers will fall over time as your cells empty out and become available for glucose. And as your insulin takes the glucose into the cells. Okay. But in the meantime, yes, if you switch to a starch centered diet, like what we're discussing, and you have a continue, continuous glucose monitor on, you are going to see those numbers go up. And you are programmed by the way that the whole rest of the our society sees diabetes to think, oh no, the numbers are going up. I'm failing. I'm getting more diabetic. This is terrible. When in reality, it just takes a little bit of time. And over time, if you were to observe, if you were really sticking to the diet and you're not eating animal products, you're not eating oil, you're eating a low fat starch center diet, those numbers go up and then they come down very nicely. And then what happens is your weight comes down and your blood glucose comes down and it all happens in concert. And it's this beautiful thing that you can observe. And oftentimes along with that, because usually these same folks will run high on their cholesterol or on their blood pressure, all of the things come down together. That is awesome. And I knew you would have the perfect solution. I and remember when I asked Dr. McDougal that um, when we were on Chef AJ's and he was like, just throw it out. Don't let, he was like, don't look at it. If it's a problem, don't look at it. <laughs> well, and, and what they're saying too, is not just if your blood pressure is high, don't go to your doctor or <laughs> yes. if your, are your sh sugars high or anything like that. But there's a difference between doing something about it and just obsessing. And I think what we're, le I'm learning some along with Cheryl. Yeah, Cheryl, I can you slide have, over? And you, I, look, yeah, see, see, she's out of the frame. Just see, look up there. Come over. <laughs> just come over more. Just get on my lap. No. I've got to <laughs> she's in the frame. I can, I mean, you guys are both perfectly in the frame. Kathy, no, she was, seriously, she was like, <laughs> oh, was over there. But that's what we have to fix. So anyhow, I don't know how it happened. So I know everyone probably thinks that underneath I'm just pushing Cheryl because she's always getting further and further away. I'm like, no, I'm trying to get her in. Well, there's a vent right here. That's why I sit on that side. That I don't, I don't want to like mess the vent up by putting a chair on it. So <laughs> you are showing us all how the sausage is made, ladies. I love it. Woo! Let's get crazy. Um, <laughs> So, so that makes really good sense. And I think what happens, and I see this happen in Cheryl, because she has one of those. And so I'll see that phone go over there. And when I see the phone tapping too much, because she'll be like, well, my, I just, and I'm like, you just ate grapes. Of course, you just ate grapes. Of course, it's going to spike now. This is not when they want you to take it, right? And you can tell me. And, yes. And let me just be very clear. If Cheryl's doctor has recommended that she wear a continuous glucose monitor, do not listen to me and take it off without consulting with your doctor. Um, Cheryl has currently has type two diabetes and she does take diabetic medication at times. And so it is important for someone, I, I want to give this disclaimer. If you are on insulin or another diabetic medication, yes, it is important for you to monitor your blood glucose because what's happening is you are being artificially regulated. And if you, this is why we want diabetics to come through the program and receive the medical care that you can only receive when you actually go through the program, because what we see happen time and time again is diabetics come into the, 
program. And by the way, type two diabetes is what we're talking about. We are not talking about type one diabetics. That's a different thing. And we can talk about that too, but type two diabetics come into our program. They begin for the first time ever to eat this way, a starch centered diet and their blood glucose can plummet. And that becomes a dangerous situation. Okay. So they do need to be monitoring their blood glucose. Now, having said that, we're not monitoring it all day long after before and after every single meal. It's their fasting blood glucose that really gives us the best picture of how well their blood sugar is being regulated by their body. And one of the things that's happening now that and maybe in the past couple of years that wasn't really happening before it used to be only people whose doctor prescribed these like little things would have them. And now that, I've been seeing yes. ads in my Facebook feed, want to know so that you can, and what they're doing is encouraging you to test this so that you don't eat any of these spiky foods to get you to keep paying for their monitor a little bit. I wonder, I'm not a medical professional, but it just, Sometimes a, a little knowledge is dangerous. We were never meant to recreationally monitor our blood glucose. If we were, it would be a part of our anatomy. It okay. So that number would be spit out of somewhere, your armpit or something every day at such and I such a clock. That. Okay. We're not made to do that for many, 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 many okay. millions of years many generations before you never even ever heard of a blood glucose monitor of any kind and they survived and they were fine why because they were surviving on natural foods the natural foods of our of our human history um the thing i'll tell you what this whole thing about you know oh i i wonder if i have a blood glucose issue i'm gonna go get a C, cgm and put it on my arm and pay extremely close attention to my blood glucose all day. It's so unfortunate. We talk about it all the time. And by we, I mean like the staff on McDougal, because I can't tell you how many people come in the program on these things and they have been going slowly crazy for months because every time they eat their blood glucose spikes. And so they're down to eating like nothing. And of course it's all bad stuff not even understanding what blood glucose is for it's for energy you want your blood glucose to spike when you eat that is what is supposed to happen so that you can have that energy that you need to get through the day and when something does not spike your blood glucose it's not doing anything for you meat is a great example you eat meat so I listen, okay, I don't want to get too much into ketosis, but if you're my, if you are observing on your blood glucose monitor that you eat meat and your blood glucose doesn't spike, that's not, oh, let's keep on eating meat. It's that meat is not a good source of fuel. <laughs> that's all it is. So I don't mean to make light of this. And I, I certainly, I, I don't want to come off as like arrogant. Oh Lord, please. I hope that's not the case. Um, I'm laughing because it's just that we all have just misunderstood, including me, believe me so much of how the body is, is meant to run and it is meant to work. And so when you're wearing a CGM and you don't have diabetes and you haven't been told by a doctor to wear one, it, it's like asking to go nuts because you don't fully understand the whole point of glucose and blood glucose anyway. So what are you doing with that data except driving yourself bananas? You know, that's all I meant to convey. And that to it totally makes sense. So she sees it happen with me all the time. I'll mm -hmm. do fine for a week or so and then all of a sudden I'll get all obsessive again. And yeah, you know, it's hard. And, and then I just talk you off the ledge, which yes. is why, why yet another reason to have a support specialist. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's very true. And Linda LaRue has a question. Why are potatoes considered suboptimal on the healthy plant-based index, the HPBI, which I've never heard of? They seem super health sustaining to me. I'm not familiar with the, with that index. I, um, yeah, I have no answer for that. I, they are healthy. Um, I really have no idea. <laughs> I, yeah, don't I, I don't know. I don't know. I can you have to ask yourself, 
Yeah. So with these kinds of things and the statistics and the indexes that you see out there and these lists, you know, there's always a list of like these are the best, you know, 12 vegetables. It's like says who and based on what, what's the criteria? I mean, technically I could, I could come up with a list of the 12 best fruits based on the ones that I think are the prettiest color. Like, is that of any substance or help to anyone? No. So, so I think, you know, I mean, I'm not saying that whatever this index is, and I probably should know about it. I just don't. Um, I'm not saying it's useless or it's bad or anything like that, but it's like, you know, if you're asking about why something didn't make the list, I'd have to know what the criteria are for, for them choosing what they chose on the list. And that makes sense. And I'm, it's not coming up really well. What is it? A dietary you, I can score. look it up later and get back to you guys next time I'm here. Yeah, let's, let's do, do that, that because it's like. Yeah, you'll just have to email me the name of it again. Plant-based something, healthy plant-based index or something. Yeah, healthy plant-based index. And I'll email it to you because it okay. looks. Because here's the thing too, like what Stacey's saying. You, I've been reading more about like who's paying for the studies that we're watching too. So like if this is a meat industry <laughs> sort yeah. of thing, who knows? It's so um, bizarre how money gets backed into any everything. There was a weird strawberry study because I'm uh, that I was seeing that was done by the Strawberry Council. Of course, strawberries were good, and strawberries are good, but the study was on strawberry powder. Hmm. So yeah, you know. You know, interestingly, I, I just was kind of sort of thinking about this as you're talking. And if so, let's say the index is based on nutrient content, like how many phytochemicals and antioxidants and all of that. You're right. Potatoes would not rank up there at the top. Not certainly not with the likes of kale or spinach or blueberries or beets or even onions probably, you know, they're not gonna be there at the tippy top. But you know what, all of those things I just listed will not keep you alive. They are way too low in calorie density for you to survive on them. This is questions? why the starch matters, okay? So everybody, that you know, one thing that we tend to do, especially in American culture is we think, oh, if something's good, more of it must be better. And if something's bad, then less of it must be better. And the reality is just because spinach is more nutritionally uh, dense, meaning more nutrients per, per spinach than <laughs> per weight of spinach than like a, what a potato would have. I'm just like doing a shot in the dark. I don't even know. But that doesn't mean, okay, go ahead and just live on spinach and eat spinach only because you have to have something that will actually sustain you. You can never eat enough spinach to to stay alive and furthermore you'd probably give yourself all kinds of problems you know digestive issues and um kidney stones you can get them from the oxalates and spinach so anyway um hopefully maybe that shed a little bit of light on the question but i'll definitely look at that index and get back to you guys next time i'm there here <laughs> so uh, thank you for that that would yeah. be great um so Carol has a question. Is the starch solution good for someone who has had cancer and wants to prevent its reoccurring? Yes. Please do it. Yes. Plants are your answer for cancer. <gasps> I didn't even mean to rhyme. T-shirt. Plants are the answer for cancer. Yes, it's true. Antioxidants. Plants are loaded with them. They are most prolific in the plant kingdom. I don't even know if they come in anything outside of plants. Yes, the starch solution would be wonderful because what you have is you, you have, like I said, the starch centered diet that sustains you and satisfies you because starches are sustaining and satisfying. Plus with the addition of fruits and vegetables that are very high in nutrients and they add variety and taste and delight to our dishes. So yeah, definitely good for someone who's trying to prevent a recurrence of cancer. Great question. Awesome. <clears throat> and we're sorry, we're looking down. We're looking for first. some questions too. Um, mm -hmm. And then Karen was talking about blood sugar spikes being normal. 
Davinka mm -hmm. was saying, I think people hang on to old beliefs, the ones our parents told us or told, were told by pediatricians. Her yes. son-in-law said he would never take away regular milk away from the kids because that's how they get calcium. And I think Dr. McDougall talks about a lot of these kind of myths that we end up with. Do you have any, yes. like while we're looking for some more questions, do you have a couple of myths maybe you want to dispel? Oh, boy. What's your favorite? Oh, my gosh. My favorite myth. <laughs> well, the CGM, you got me going on that. The continuous glucose monitor is always one of my favorites. <laughs> I get a little feisty. I apologize, everyone, if I'm coming across feisty at all today. I'm really tired. You are not. The you program. Not. You know what? I want you guys to know, we, in case you couldn't tell, Cheryl and Kathy, when we go through a program, we literally leave it all out on the field. We do. Every single one of us on staff. It, I have to tell you guys, it's so fun. We all just sort of link arms and just do it together and we get through it. But by the end, we're all just wiped. And it's it's like it's that exhilaration of having accomplished something really great and feeling amazing about it. But we're also just tired. So anyway, so my feistiness is probably a combination of tiredness and the conversation around a continuous glucose monitor. So I apologize. <laughs> you have I'm nothing so to apologize about. You're like okay. we, we appreciate you taking time out of this very special day this is the oh, last yes. day of this so happy cohort, to. which is so, a lot yeah. it's a lot it's a busy day and we really appreciate it is it. so how many people of have course. you been seeing every day for the past i have 26 months? patients wow. this time 26 and tiffany has 33. you should have tiffany on here she would be another great person to come and give an interview she's the oh, other support specialist she's awesome Anyone so from awesome. the McDougal program, from top to bottom, is always welcome over here. Very um, good. Well, I so you asked me to fill a little time while you're doing something. You know that you can count on me for that. So I have one other thing I wanted to share from the program today. So, you know, of course, as I'm saying goodbye, I had my last morning check-in with all of my patients this morning, and we're having our goodbye goodbyes they're not really goodbyes it's like see you next week but because we've been together for 12 days straight it feels momentous like oh my goodness we're not going to be doing this every day anymore and it's always sweet and i always get tears in my eyes and stuff as people are saying bye but one of the women that i spoke to today said she goes i have been trying to do mcdougall forever She's like, before that, I tried a million different things. And she was trying to make a decision between doing our program and then and then another program um, of a doctor that does more like a, a nutritarian diet. And um, and she so she lost, you know, lost a good amount of weight during the program and was just so thrilled with her results, but also just the knowledge, but she said, you know, what was the number one thing that I'm walking away with? She goes, I don't know how I missed the memo all this time, but the starch is the key. She's like, that's it. It is the starch. She goes, somehow I always thought that the message I was hearing was eat starch. Starch is good for you. It's great. Da, da, da. And she said today, she's like, it just clicked right into place that the starch is everything. And I was like, yes, that's it. Some might even say the starch is the solution, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, that's awesome. But it, yes, but it's so great to see that light bulb go on for people because the thing is everybody, because of every other diet we've ever been on, has told us nutrients, get your nutrients, you know? And so all these people are trying to eat these gigantic salads and I need like 15 different kinds of seeds and fruits and this kind of stuff in there. Like you guys were talking about on your trip where you had a tiny salad and you had, you know, maybe a couple of beans, that kind of thing. They're trying to get by on that. And your hunger is going to win every time. You cannot beat your hunger. You cannot eat under your hunger drive and sustain that. It's not possible. And so she, this was the first time she allowed herself to receive the message, eat starch. Everything else is just like color commentary. Truly, the starch is the star of the show. 
eat starch with the addition of some fruits and vegetables for taste and variety. That's it. And the starch is the thing that is going to turn your health around, is going to make you lose weight, it's going to make you feel amazing. It's the starch. The starch is the solution. I sound like the biggest commercial ever. <laughs> I did not rehearse this, it's awesome. <laughs> but it's really true. Okay. I have a couple more details. And I don't know if you can stay another five or 10 minutes or how. Sure. Yeah. I got you. Let's do it. Awesome. So Susan, who was talking about the glucose monitor earlier, has a few other details. And one, Susan, if you're still watching, because she's saying, I'm in a blood sugar class run by a whole food plant-based person. So if you could give us the name of the program or something that might help too, but that's what we've got. She thinks it's best if you only eat foods that keep your spike below 30 points and yes, for two hours or less. My uh, blood sugar spikes even 100 points and stays elevated for hours, even as much as six hours. And having said that, I feel so much better and, and less pain eating whole food plant-based. So that's kind of, that's the whole story I've pieced together. Awesome. Susan, thank you so much for providing a little more information. That's so helpful. So yes, a, a spike of 100 or even you know more than that is perfectly normal. The fact that it stays up for a long time just means you're a little bit insulin resistant probably, or maybe like you said, pre-diabetic. That is going to turn around if you eat a starch-centered diet with the addition of fruits and vegetables. Um, someone who is pre-diabetic I can't even tell y'all how fast it turns around. I mean, it's just, obviously I'm making general sweeping statements that do will not apply to hundred percent of the people. But my observation is that when we catch you early, like before you're diagnosed with diabetes or when you're very early in first few years after being diagnosed, you will see your numbers return to normal naturally much faster than someone who's had diabetes for few decades and has been on medications and been on insulin, that kind of thing. So, um, you know what though, I recognize, I say this to my patients all the time. I realize that this is a little bit of a trust fall that I'm asking you to do. And I have a lot of compassion for that. I know it's not easy. This is why Kathy, Kathy has asked me so many times. She's like, do you get sick of saying the same thing over and over and over and over? And I always tell her, what do I tell you? No, I don't. There are certain things because I just, they're total misinformation, but well, this kind of stuff, I never being, get sick of it. I just want to go back. Cause I can tell you've done so much stuff. You're a human being and you're allowed to be a little bit in there <laughs> sometimes. And you're allowed to, to enjoy telling a story and things like that. Cause yeah, it, it adds to who you are and how you help people. Oh, thank you so much. But I do want to, people to know, I would tell you this, 15,000 times if I had to, if on that 15,000th time you were willing to take the trust fall. But you have to be a person who can ask themselves, would I be willing to run an experiment? Because it, it can be a little scary, especially if you have a continuous glucose monitor and you've been told by someone else, even someone within the plant-based world that you need to have your levels here and you are feeling so out of control because your levels are never there, right? You're feeling so pent up and worried and anxious. What am I going to do? You know, it's hard to just let go and eat potatoes, rice, corn, quinoa, barley, oatmeal, fruits and vegetables. I understand. I understand the apprehension that you must feel, but I am asking you to take a chance on yourself, run an experiment, do it for a week, do it for two weeks and see if you don't feel better, weigh less, and have better blood glucose control. The better thing, rather than wearing a CGM, would be to take your blood glucose daily, manually, just one fasting blood glucose in the morning. If you really, really want to observe it, you'll see it go down. Maybe not in the first day, but after a few days of being faithful to the diet, it will come down. Those are all perfect. And I'm going to try and we'll see how many questions we can get through and you will cut me off. Okay, I'll go I'll shorter answers. I'm sorry. So this one's an easy one, I think. Should you change anything on the McDougal diet during or post menopause? No. That's what I thought you were going to say. Um, type 2 diabetes TS here on metformin. I noticed that after eating a starch-based breakfast like oatmeal with banana, 
my blood sugar will go low and I get hypoglycemic symptoms. Any suggestions? Eat more food. That's the crazy one, isn't it? Like, it's you're... so hard to wrap your head around that until you actually experience it. But like, mm -hmm. it's true. A lot of the, a lot of, a lot of the answers to this are always like eat more and it's just bizarre to me yeah um okay da, da, da. and karen was talking to susan and saying my a1c was above seven when i started eating this way i was on three diabetes meds that i'm not going to try and pronounce it took me three and a half months to get off my meds and a year to go from pre-diabetes which is to normal which is amazing so congratulations karen yeah like don't misunderstand like when we talk about me getting off my meds and stuff don't misunderstand that all of a sudden i have this perfect glucose going on i don't i still get spikes sometimes they hang there things still happen sometimes i still have to take some insulin it just depends what's going on um and it's it's something that i'm gonna fight with over the next year because until i can you know clear the fat out the fat is still fighting with the sugar to take a place in those cells. And we're also getting feedback that agrees with me. So I particularly like it, which is you are not feisty. You are passionate from Dilia. <laughs> and you have Thank absolutely you. nothing to apologize from, from Betsy. Um, you, Apple Betsy. says her favorite myth is oil and salad dressings is needed to absorb the fat soluble nutrients in the veggies. Not true. The veggies have built in fat and, one of the things that sometimes I, my annoyance is when people want to have the, without any fat in your diet, you're going to get um, Alzheimer's or some different things like that. And it's like, this isn't a no fat diet. This is a no oil added diet. And that is a very, that is as different as keto and whole food plant-based. To me, there's a big wall down the middle, right? Yeah, right. That's exactly uh, right. Because all plant foods have fat in varying amounts. And like we, I think we discussed before, oatmeal's higher, a higher in fat plant food, not as high as soybeans or avocados or nuts or seeds. But yeah, it's, you're going to be all right. If you're worried about it, eat a tablespoon of ground flax on your oatmeal every day. Call it a day. Yep. I love that. Because it, it doesn't have to necessarily be all or nothing. Jeremy wants to know, would you prefer cooked or raw spinach? That no connotation. So maybe what's your cooked. favorite way to eat spinach, Stacey? I like, yeah, that's actually a great question. I like to cook it, just steam it up. I put it in a pot of water and cook it, cook it, cook it, cook it. And then I put some vinegar on it. And why do I do all that? Because I really love Dr. Cald Caldwell Esselstyn and he told me to. So I do what he says. <laughs> and Rill yeah. is saying um, she's gotten within seven pounds of her goal weight. Anytime I check the scale, which is not often these days, I find I haven't lost any weight, but I am losing inches. Can you talk to that, Stacy? Interesting. Well, I would want to know if Rill it has started a new um, muscle building regimen of some kind, maybe doing some extra push-ups or uh, maybe getting in the gym and doing some um, resistance or weight training. So that's a possibility. Um, I think that's all I got. That sounds good. And let's see. Um you forgot anything else holly was just saying the problem with index is the super nutrient dense things like kale are at the top but that gives the impression to just eat kale right and so they okay so it is what i thought isn't it yep that's it seems, what it is it seems like she knew i'm actually writing down some stuff to send you along with your new t-shirt slogan that we're all going to be buying <laughs> Plants are the answer <laughs> for cancer. Because I'm like, that needs to yeah. be preserved. Um, oh, Betsy says, I keep humming Springsteen singing my head. It takes a leap of faith. And that's helped her for the past six months. Awesome. Excellent. Um, Very good. LRG says, I noticed when I was eating mainly potatoes and broccoli, keeping it simple, I couldn't get through my workouts and my hair started shedding. I tend to be low on iron been plant-based 28 years. Do you have any suggestions? Sure. 
Yeah. Um, if you, if you've actually been diagnosed low on iron, um, you know, you definitely want to troubleshoot that and figure that out with your doctor, but also there are lots of good plant sources of iron. You can Google them. Um, but you want to make sure that you eat them with vitamin C. So a vegetable or a fruit containing vitamin C helps with um, increasing the absorption of iron from your plant foods. As far as the hair falling out, anytime you make a change in life, whether it's a good change or a bad change, hair falling out is a side effect. Dr. McDougall always tells our patients who bring this up, as long as you have enough hair left on your head, you're good. Don't worry about it if you, if you still have a decent normal amount of your hair remaining on your head. And then, you know, there is alopecia where people lose hair, you know, and you've got like, you've got, what is it? Bald spots appearing all over your head. Like that's not good. Maybe go see your doctor about that. But um, it is not unusual when somebody changes their diet or changes their exercise regimen or moves or gets a divorce or has a baby for your hair to change because it's so related to hormones and your body sends weird signals about release the hair at different times at points of stress in your life. Awesome. Do you want to? Oh, so real did clarify. Um, uh, I walk a mile or so every day. So that was the person who, was, was, the, um, who was losing inches, but not pounds. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. and then Allie says, are they bringing McDougal's t-shirts back? I asked. <laughs> so, yes. Um, so what mm, the latest I heard is that there was new, um, new, like new stuff they were going to put out. It, are they not up on the website right now? It might be. I'm going to look it up. Let's see. Shop. I don't know, but I think I'm, I'm wondering if she's making a joke about this being one of the new McDougal ones. Um, oh, okay. awesome. I'm so good at getting jokes. Fabulous. I missed that completely. Well, no, like, you didn't get, get to see the merch. laughing crying face. So I'm <laughs> like, I think it's a joke, but I'm not. Oh, I'm sorry. See, I can't see the comment. So I didn't get to see the emoji. I apologize. Okay. I really can joke around and I do have a good sense of humor. <laughs> and Allie said, actually, no shirts, T-shirts last time I looked on the site. So it's it's a joke and okay. serious at the same time. And it's real. Okay. And yeah. It, um, let's wrap up I'm with not this sure. question. Um, okay. Last question for you. Um, Linda says, my blood work parathyroid hormone indicates I'm not getting enough dietary calcium. Are there any starch solution foods I should include to help this situation? Um, you might want to Google plant sources of calcium. And I believe tofu is one. I think that the greens are all pretty high in calcium. Broccoli, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, there are quite a few. Yeah, I agree. And the same thing with like iron, like the, I think we we're brought up teaching calcium is in milk, iron is in red meat, but like I've had anemia a few times since I was, I went vegetarian and vegan. And you, if you have a real iron problem, there's actually even a little fish that they sell that's made of iron that you can put in some stews to increase that iron in there. I don't know if that's a considered good thing or not. They do, they talk about that, but like Indian food is great because it's lentils, spinach, greens, all of that stuff. And a lot of that stuff is like greens and tofu is calcium heavy too. I just want to just provide a little bit of clarification just in case this is what we're talking about with that fish. Um, just so y'all know, we're not talking about an actual fish, like a animal. Oh, no, it's we're an talking eye. about a little metal. Yeah. So I just want to, yeah, no. Because I did clar say a little fish, and I did no, not clarify okay. that. The, well, actually, the clarification I wanted to provide is something different, which is that we do not recommend that you depend on metals, like actual iron, like cast iron, or anything like that to get your iron intake because that's that's a whole other thing about anyway about potentially leaching iron out of 
like actual direct iron out of a cast iron vessel into your body is maybe not the best, most natural idea. So um, getting it through plant foods and potentially some people with the aid and um, observation of their doctor and monitoring of their doctor do have to supplement. Um, but heme iron is a totally different thing. So the iron that you get from animals does not generally solve or fix iron deficiency anemia. Well, and so. it seems like most of those things were done differently. And sorry if I was providing some, I was just thinking, because it was a couple of decades ago, what some of the things my doctor offered me at that point. Right. And, and cooking yeah. and cast iron was actually on that list. Mm -hmm. so yes. And, and there are, that list still exists and people still do that and recommend that. I was just wanting to clarify that the McDougal team program, Dr. McDougal himself does not recommend that as a good way to get your iron intake. I think that's perfect. And Apple was saying all dark leafy greens have far more calcium than any dairy product. And, and just like what you were just saying too about the kind of iron in animal products isn't as good as the kind of iron or as easily accessible, I believe you were saying. Mm -hmm. I could have missed the boat on that one. <laughs> no, that's, that's good. It's not the type of iron that you need. The type of iron you need is the type that's in plants. Thank you. Not, not I, I yeah. love I love all of that. And so do you have any parting words? Because we're out of questions. So I'm going to let you go live hey. a beautiful, what, you'll probably get 15 whole minutes downtime <laughs> before you go to the next thing. Yeah, well, I'm going to get some lunch and I'm going to rest for a minute because we have graduation this evening. And of course, before that, I got to go get my kids from school and do all the after school stuff with them. So it will be a busy day. But I just want to thank you all so much for letting me join and and being here with us. 90, 91 people right now. 91. Wow. <laughs> I love I it. People love listening to you and being able to ask you questions and and. I cannot tell you how much we appreciate you giving your time to us and our community. It, it really means the world. And I feel like it helps clear up so many questions for people. Yeah. And also- My pleasure. I love being here with y'all. Please uh, extend our congratulations to all the new graduates. Um, Will do. A very exciting time. And- it's also a very scary time to feel like, oh no, now I got to do this on my own. But you don't because you still right. get guys for a year. Yeah. Right. It's, it well, is I'm going to send them all over here to watch your channel. <laughs> <laughs> At least for when you're doing talks. Hopefully we'll get to see you in November. Is that? Yeah. We, we can talk offline great. about that too. But you are absolutely... If, if we can keep bringing you on once or twice a month, I would bring you on every week if you want to come on every week. But I'm also <laughs> trying not to monopolize all of your time. And I would love to have Tiffany on. I would love to have Heather on. Um, I think that I'm too small potatoes for Dr. McDougal to come on and possibly Dr. Lim, but they are more than invited should they want to. Yes. Thank you. I will, I will let them all know that they're invited. You may get more than you're asking for. <laughs> we all show up at once. That's Hi. All right. We're going to answer that, questions. That is perfect, <laughs> right? Okay. Well, thank you so much. And thanks to all of you guys for asking such really great questions and being here and following up with extra information. I know Stacy does come and look at the comments. So if you're in the replay, if you put something in, she might pop in. If it's something important, don't forget that you can always ask Dr. McDougall on his Sunday YouTube Live on his channel. So again, if you're ever thinking, oh, I want to ask Kathy what Dr. McDougall would say, you could ask Dr. McDougall instead, right? Definitely. Okay, Do it. Guys. He loves questions. He does <laughs> love questions. And, and oh, he does. Yes. <laughs> He, he like lights up yeah. like when someone because his it, whole demeanor just the the online program is mostly on zoom calls a lot of the different things and so the q a's are especially so when someone 
puts their picture on. You can tell he's paying attention. But then if you unmute and actually speak, like it's like a present. Yep. Oh yeah, he loves it. Well, because there's so many people that aren't wanting to be seen or heard. And so sometimes he feels like he's just answering questions off a page, you know, and it's just not as fun that way. It's, it's more fun to feel like you're really interacting and engaging, yeah. which is what he's done his whole career up until now. So yeah, if you have questions for Dr. McDougall, never hesitate. He loves, loves Q and A. Yep. Okay, everybody go make yourself some good starch for your dinner and your lunch, right? Mm -hmm. And you can do that by just throwing in some potatoes, baking them now, baking a few for a few days, or going ahead and making a double batch of rice, and you'll be pretty good. You'll have a, you'll really thank yourself for it later. Yep. All right, Stacy, thanks so much, and we'll see you next month. Bye, see you bye, next everybody. Time. Thank you all.